Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we're going to take a look inside Struggle for Europe, 1939 to 1945. This is another war game from Worthington Publishing, uh, kind of a uh, abstract card-driven uh, struggle for Europe. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. All right, so this is one of their uh, little bit bigger box. And let's see what goodness we got in here. So we start off as expected with the rule book, and they go right. I mean, there's no flowery, you know, right. You know, it, it's rules on page one with uh, Worthington, which is good. You get right into the game. So, uh, well, actually, yep. Oh, we have two copies of the rule book. So that's good. So it's not twice as thick, it's half as thick. It is an eight page rule book. The complexity on this is very, it's about four out of 10, I believe it said on the back. So quick rule book, full color, decent sized print, glossy. Basically tells you what you can do. And then you do it. So the Axis player wins the game. The Axis player has seven victory point differential at the end of an Allied player turn. The Allied player wins. The Allied player has a seven point victory differential at the end of the Axis player turn. And then we got our counter sheets here. Strength values. Looks like there are four counter sheets. Oop, and they are punching very easily, so that's good. All right. So we have the blue team, which I'm going to assume is the Americans. Uh, we got some British soldiers here, it looks like, as well. And like I said, they are punching very, very smoothly, very cleanly. They're pre rounded goodness. We do have some tanks. We obviously have various strength points one through two for the soldiers. One here for these brown soldiers, and then the tanks are, or I assume, is a strength point of three. And like they're just coming out. And then we've got gray, which we're going to go and zoom as Germans. In fact, we have the Iron Cross here. And there's the German markers. We've got some uh, emplacements here. And then we've got the Russians in red. Comrade. And Russian control markers. And then the last sheet is, looks some more, blue is apparently the Allies, let's just put it that way. So we've got the Americans and the British here all in with a blue background with their uh, distinctive uh, uniform colors. Um, and then these are the British control markers. So four sheets of counters. Then we've got our big game board. We'll open that in a little bit. We've got two decks of cards. We've access and allied and probably some more cards in here. We'll take a look at that. And then some bags for sorting your counters. Okay, so let's take a look at the decks of cards you get here. We've got the Allied deck, and it is actually larger than the Axis deck. Probably because you have three factions in the Allies, but uh, take a look at them. They are good, good quality, very thick. They have that nice, um, if you hold them upright, you get the, kind of get the linen look without the linen annoyance linen cards tend to stick together and then you end up sleeving them and then you lose the benefit of the linen so it's kind of a lose-lose situation um, but these are nice uh, smooth cards so they separate very easily so we've got cards that say air power one air power two or air power one air power one air power one air power two i saw that. i knew i'd seen that so we've got air power we've got events lend lease so on and so forth so 
And I guess this may indicate what kind of mar what kind of counters you can use with them and the different actions you can take. It's all icon driven except for some text on the events. So layer power cards, move operations, so on and so forth. So that is your allies deck and then the axis deck is uh, again pretty much the same thing battle event versus a regular event and coordinated offensive player can use this card to perform two operations each operation must be completed before the next permanently eliminate this card if used for the event so it's like I said it's definitely a card driven card driven game so Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, map here for Struggle for Europe, 1939 to 1945. It's not a large map, which is nice. It's uh, three panels, three panels by two. So it doesn't take up a lot of table space. I'm not sure how solo friendly uh, the game is. I don't think it's listed as being particularly solo friendly, but I believe uh, I read that uh, many people were playing it solo uh, during testing, you know, just... Uh, Playing a true solo, you know, running both sides. There's no AI built into the game, but uh, so you got a victory point track. We've got a strategic bombing track up here at the top. Axis hand reduction, allied hand reduction that goes a certain direction. Um, and Moscow, and then through Poland, all throughout Europe here. There you go. From London, USA, allies may begin to use on allied deck two. So the decks are obviously subdivided into, uh, you know, more cards get added as you go. So that is the board. Let's recap what you get in the box. So if you pick up a copy of Struggle for Europe 1939 to 1945 from Worthington Publishing, you are going to get a deck of allied cards. You're gonna get a deck of Axis cards. You're gonna get some bags to organize your counters in. You're going to get a board, game board, the game board we just looked at. So let me get these to stay put here. The game board we just looked at, you're gonna get four sheets of easy to punch rounded, pre-rounded counters. <laughs> that came another one right there. And you're going to get two copies of the rulebook. All in the box. Hope you pick up a copy. Thanks for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh!